Abun Yang Salam Seyo Chichari, Ininza Long Tilisi Sanctum, Nagali Milana, Go E Sanctum Yucholana, Gile, Amasa Yulana Yucholoi, Go De Amamuche, Maliro Yucho Tamre. Taking this big opportunity, I would like to thank Kids Foundation for giving such platform to share a few thoughts on the topic, My Vision of a Future India. Today, I would like to share my three vision of a future India. The first vision is corruption free India, second poverty free India, and third insurgency free India. Let's talk about my first vision that is corruption free India. India is corrupted country. Everyone knows that. Why it is corrupted? The first things the first thing according to me is it doesn't respect the independent body such as media judiciary and so on whenever the party come to power whether it may be a congress bjp or other party they overrule everything that's the reason we never grow but i believe that we can do and we can achieve the target so-called corruption free india it is our duty the young minds should raise our voice young minds young minds should come together and rock together for the greater India so that we can achieve our goal. Let's talk about the second vision that is poverty free India. When we see now 27.5% of Indian population is living under below poverty line and it is said 75% live in the rural areas. Now my question is how can we eradicate this? It is the duty of educated minds to come together to fight for the cause. The poverty in India is growing day by day. Everyone is witnessing that. Why? It is because of the people's move in every election that we do. It is because that our corrupted leaders are involved there. They are looting us like hell and we are just sitting idly. We never raise our voice, but nevertheless, Let's come together and work together for the greater India. Now, how can we eradicate poverty in India? Is yes. I have three main agendas to discuss over here. I think it is because of the inequality in the society. The other thing is because of the conflicts. And thirdly, that is because of the poor education. Now, we must learn to live in a diverse society. We must inculcate the so-called inclusive thought or inclusive society. We must respect each other culture, religion, etc. and etc. We must think of other people also so that we can live peacefully. Now when we talk about education it's very poor. Every Indian citizen have ever a right to get education but we never implement that. I wish and I pray that the government will do good so that they will bring back the children who are left behind. It is be when education is imparted to the people, we can bring change in the society. It is the biggest weapon that we can use to change the world. Another thing is, as I have mentioned, the inequality in the society. The richer are getting richer, the poor people are going worse day by day. Now who is responsible for that? Let us join together and move forward so that we can bring India to another level and prove the world that we can eradicate poverty. Now, my last vision, that is insurgency free India. I believe one day India will achieve that. Being from Nagaland, I have faced, I have heard and I have seen many things in and around me. Now. We, when I have talked about insurgency, I've, I've been struck by the word mentioned by Shashi Tharoor, the member of parliament. He said, in Pakistan, the army has a state and in India, the state has an army. But to my mind, when I think of the northeastern state, we have been ruling by AFSPA, which is the Armed Force Special Power Act. When I think and when I see that, it is like the army has a government. It is army who is ruling everything. Government tries spending monies in development rather than the uh, armies which are deployed in such places. 
how better it will be and how good the states will be i rather suggest uh, suggest a government to focus more on developmental stra strategies than the different strategies in its own country i believe if government focuses much on these things i assure you india will be one day achieve so called insurgency free india from here i conclude my short speech jai സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യം തന്നെ ജീവിതം പാരിതന്ത്ര്യം മാനികൾക്ക് മൃതിയേക്കാൾ ഭയാനകം വി ഹാവ് കം എ ലോങ് വേ ഇറ്റ്സ് ബിൻ സെവൻറ്റി ഫോർ ഇയേഴ്സ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഹിയർ വി ആർ സെലിബ്രേറ്റിംഗ് ദ ഐഡിയ ഓഫ് എൻ ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻറ്റ് ഇന്ത്യ ഐ എം നോട്ട് ലൈങ് വെൻ ഐ സേ ദാറ്റ് 
in this long journey of 74 years we have lost certain values the very foundation of development and if someone randomly asks me about my idea of a future India or my dream about my country in the coming years it would be necessarily these words that pop up in my mind that is humanity and freedom I do consider these two words as the most important aspects of any developmental goal in any nation and that too for my country even. It's not because I don't have any social levels to point out. It's not because there are no political tensions or religious tensions in this nation. But definitely I believe that we have lost certain values in this long journey because of which our base or foundation is still a bit weak. And I do believe and I do dream of a country to grow in all ways in the coming years to a more developed, to a more empowering country. We know that it was in August, though this month, we came across so many public acts, policies, projects and everything, including the EIA, which was, to be honestly, and according to my personal opinion, a very destructive thing against environment. We lacked humanity there. Even in each and everything that we resist or protest or whatever let it be, we find that there is a kind of humanity lacking at some point. I do consider and believe that humanity is the most important developmental goal that we should keep in mind while imagining about a developed nation, India. Along with that comes the idea of freedom, which we are permitting or which we are confining ourselves these days. When it comes to a public policy or act or anything, we are confining ourselves to a small space that we don't peacefully interact or discuss or debate about this. And we, we lack in ideas these days because of the same. I would say that we as a nation has failed somewhere of denying the individual and collective feelings, the individual and collective capabilities of every individual in this nation. I would say that we have lacked humanity in places where people were tortured in the name of caste, people were haunted in the name of religion, people were raped in the name of sex and gender, people were continuously targeted in the name of politics and religion. These all are just because of the fact that we lack humanity and the idea of freedom to choose, practice and to have a free life of liberty at some point of time. I would dream of an India where we get all these powers back, to get all these values back of humanity, tolerance and acceptance, thus by transforming this nation into one of the most brilliant nation in the world and realizing the dreams of great people like uh, Abdul Kalam who dreamt of a superpower by 2020. Yes, we are in 2020, but we are lacking some kind of values which I have already said about. I think it's high time that we should channelize everything of ours to make this nation a better and a prosperous one. I think there is no visionary other than B.R. Ambedkar who rightly said that a democracy like India should bring out the most significant change in the lives of the most depressed and the most poorest of the nation without a bloodshed. And that is what we expect of a democracy. Saluting his words, let me conclude with the beautiful idea of a country which was penned down by Rabindranath Tagore. Where the mind is without fear, where the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where tireless striving stretches its arms into perfection, where words come out of the depth of truth, into that heaven of freedom, my father let my country awake. Let me conclude by wishing everyone independence and the freedom to think high.
wishes to all of you. Today, as I stand here to express my views on the topic, my vision for a future India, I would like to tell you all that we, could, we all could have had that one dream or certain wishes that we want to accomplish for our country. I'm sure each and every one is a proud Indian because of its world-class heritage that it has, different kinds of values and culture that we uphold. If there is one nation which can be symbolized to the proverb unity and diversity, that is India. If you ask me what are my wishes for our country, these are three E's. Equality, education and economy. Who could have not dreamt of being in a country that treats all of them equal to one another? I'm sure irrespective of all religions, regions, castes and everything, we all wanted to be treated in front of others, treated equal in front of others. I would say that our constitution says that all citizens can be treated, should be treated equal in front of law. But however, the situations in the country doesn't prevail the same. If you ask me what is the other E that I would like to make a change upon, it is the education. Citizens should be given the right to choose the kind of education that they want. All people should be given proper and equal education. Education should be something that's accessible to all of its citizens. Economy. We are in a situation that economy is not stabilized in our country. The unstable economy in our country leads into a situation that our youngsters fly abroad to pursue their dreams and jobs. So let me tell you my friends, who could have not dreamt of having an India with a GDP of 8% per capita. Every year we are confused about what is going to be the job condition. Are we going to earn well in this country? So let me also tell you that education, equality or even economy is not a concern. Safety and protection for everyone, especially the women and children in India is another concern. Let us all hope that our country will prosper someday and bring in equality, proper education and a good economy for all its citizens. Wish you all a happy 74th Independence Day wishes once again. Jai Hind!